being a parent isn't easy. But these days, smart devices are making things easier. Just look at a tantrum-throwing child who is calmed down by a smartphone, or the cranky teenager that lights up after getting their social media or video game fix. According to the Pew Research Center, one in four teens say they own a smartphone. As technology becomes more pervasive among young Americans, it comes at a time when technology and social media companies continue to earn billions each year. And this comes on the backdrop of ad spending on social media surpassing TV at $72 versus $71 billion, respectively, in 2016. But there's a catch to all this. Kids used to compare themselves with their peer group at school, so they'd have to go to school and around, or they'd watch TV and uh, look at the Fonz on Happy Days and say, hey, I'm not as cool as Henry Winkler. But now, you know, it's instantaneous comparison. Just log on to Facebook, log on to Instagram, and it's instantaneous comparison with a peer group or many peer groups and and so many kids feel like they don't match up. Gene Twangy is a psychology professor who wrote the article Have Smartphones Destroyed a Generation for the Atlantic? She says that smartphones have created a lonely, dislocated generation. She notes that eighth graders who are heavy users of social media increase their risk of depression by 27%. Teens who spend three hours a day or more on electronic devices are 35% more likely to have a risk factor for suicide, such as making a suicide plan. The internet is also full of other types of content, some sexual, aggressive, and violent. Without constant supervision, children can easily expose themselves to content that they are unable to process like adults. The average age of exposure to porn is now about nine years old. So most of these boys are looking at porn as well. Hillary Cash runs Restart, a rehabilitation clinic for tech addicts. Many of her clients are teenage boys between the ages of 13 and 18 who are addicted to video games and the internet. Those young patients experience the same highs and lows that drug addicts go through, and the consequences are real. If you're cut off from the internet or from a drug that you've ingested or whatever it is, then it takes some period of time before the brain to normal, and that period is called withdrawal. So, in the case of our clients, the negative consequences are things like sleep deprivation, very, very dysregulated sleep, the school refusal, withdrawing from friends, stopping uh, engaging in physical activities. Other researchers also found similar patterns when it comes to the relationship between children and their exposure to violent video games. I did a study with over 3,000 kids. We followed them across a couple of years, and we found that the, uh, the children who were playing more violent video games at the beginning of the study were more aggressive in their behaviors two years later. Even tech icons such as Bill Gates and Steve Jobs have said they limited the amount of technology that their kids have at home. But on the flip side, there are clear benefits to technology when it comes to educating children and helping them build connections. I think that social networking does have significant problems associated with it. It also has you know, pro-social aspects. If you're gay, lesbian, transgender, uh, if you have a chronic illness, uh, if you feel isolated for some reason and are reaching out, um, then, then social networking can be a huge plus for you. In the end, some experts say it all boils down to parents being educated about the drawbacks of technology and how to make peace with them. Clearly, the issue is for parents is control. You have to be very conscientious about it. Uh, and basically start controlling media from the get-go. And that means reading to your baby, not putting a smartphone in her hand, and co-viewing. And co-viewing means not just sitting in the same room with your kid while they're playing a video game or on an iPad or watching TV or a movie, but actually discussing the content. And parents need to be very involved in making sure that their children have many interesting activities and hobbies that are social and intellectually stimulating and 
imaginatively stimulating that aren't related to the screen. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.